Hi, I'm Nicole Hamilton. I'm the author of Hamilton Seashell. It's a complete recreation of the Unix Seashell and most of the utilities you'd see on a Unix or a Linux box, uh, all completely from scratch uh, on Windows. And so what we're going to look at here is the product running. It comes up as a nice pretty blue window, and, but you can set, of course, the colors to be anything you like. I'm going to uh, go into a directory here where I know I have some uh, source. This happens to be a source for just the various utilities that come with it. And of course, like you might in uh, the command at XE command processor, you could use things like dir and so on. And all of these things still work. But you also get the various kinds of commands you'd accept, expect on a Unix machine, like ls, which comes up in a little bit different format, uses color, collects together the directories in bright, and uses green to mark the uh, any files that are marked with the system bit, which I've just simply used to make my make files stand out and make it easier for me. Um, we can do things like all of the utilities, of course, have online help. Here's the uh, help for the uh, ls utility. And uh, you can get a long format here. Um, for example, there we go, is long format. If you, uh, or even even longer format, uh, where it's uh, uh, now got, we can see the difference here, where it's an even longer format date. Uh, we can, uh, we have aliases, for example, here is an alias LL for doing that long format. We can, we have another alias here for running the more filter, uh, where it comes up in interactive mode, starting the, clearing the screen first, because it ex and, and staying there even if it's a short uh, amount of data. We might, for example, type LL into MI, and, and that's what you see, and we can arrow up and down through it. We can do things like, um, here's an alias for the fgrep. Um, F is uh, F, fgrep, find first file. And we're going to find all of the occurrences of find first file in the various C files. If we simply wanted uh, just a list of them, we could uh, do that. I'm going to use the history function here. Bang asterisk means all of the arguments of the previous command. And that just gives me a, a list of them. And so, for example, we might uh, then, uh, let's go ahead and, and word count just the output. Bang, bang says take the entire previous command. This is the searching for find first in all of the dot C's, paste it in here, and the back quotes on either side say run what's inside of there, and paste the output, that is this list right here, back on the command line as arguments to word count. And there you see that. We could um, alternately uh, say let's pick up the last word of the last command, which now is that whole quote, back quoted string, and pass that instead as an argument to mi, the alias for the more filter, and now we're bumping from one to another there. Um, we can turn on line numbers. We can turn them off. Uh, we can go into a C language mode. You can see the tabs and character turns. Uh, we can put it in a binary mode where you can see those characters in hex. Or we can put it in a uh, mode where you can see them as, as control characters. Um, you see there is a help prompt here at the bottom if you actually want to know how to do these things, there is, there it is, there's the toggling line numbers, toggling C language mode, toggling binary mode, and so on. <clears throat> we can, of course, also do calculations. Um, for example, 7 divided by 3, or 7 integer division by 3, or 7 remainder 3. Uh, we can write combine uh, loops uh, with uh, uh, these calculations. So for example, let's set sum equal to 0. And for i equals 1 to 10 do, let's add up the uh, these numbers in sum. And there's the value. We can put these into scripts. For example, here's a uh, script that just factors a big number. And if we'd like to know where that is, we can use the where is routine to ask that. Um, if I wanted to um, just get the um, 
the size of that file, I might think about doing this. Um, this is pasting the previous command, the where is factor, back on the command line and then running it inside the back quotes and pasting the output back on here. Unfortunately, the output has these spaces in there, and so if I just did it like that, you see it's going to break it up at spaces and it's not going to find each of those files. But what I can do is something a little bit uh, more interesting. I can, uh, it's a feature just in this C shell. I can use double back ticks, and now when I do it, it uh, pastes the whole, that whole output as one big word, as one line on here, and there it is. There's the factor. I can go browse that. Uh, that file. And there it is. Uh, you can see that we have procedures. They can be recursive. Um, this was uh, uh, using uh, uh, a loop here to take uh, every number from 2 up to the square root of the number we're trying to factor, looking for numbers that divide evenly with no remainder into the number we're trying to factor. If it finds one, it prints it out and then factors whatever's left. This is a self-loading procedure because the first time you type factor something, the seashell doesn't know how to do it. So it goes out and it finds this script, it begins reading it, reads that definition of the factor procedure, and then the factor procedure is invoked right afterwards. The next time you say factor something, it's going to know how to do that, and it will be a little bit faster. With this one, the script is a little small, so we probably wouldn't be able to see the effect. But let's uh, do something where we might see it. Here's a little more complex script that creates a calendar. And if we uh, time that again, it's a tiny bit faster. Uh, not a lot, but it is a little bit. Uh, that, uh, by the way, we, we can take a look at where that is. And again, that's in the samples directory. And, and by the way, I should also mention that uh, uh, this whole where is that I've been using uh, is, in fact, also a script. And we might take a look at that. Oops. There we go. And that's the script and it's just looking through each of the path directories and, and looking to see if the name exists. And If you don't give an extension, it's trying the various possibilities. Um, we also have an ability to do command line editing. Um, so for example, if I say let's get all of the files that begin with B, I can cycle through them by pressing the tab key or I could paste them all on there with Control D. I could paste everything onto that's in this directory on the command line. I could paste everything that's in this directory or any subdirectory on here. Uh, I could paste, uh, uh, you know, any every file and so on in the whole directory structure. Um, and uh, then I can continue coming up here and I can go in the middle of this and I can insert character you can see it's very fast. This is all one long echo command, echo all of this stuff. Let me go back down to the end here and we recount it. There is a 42,000 character command line I was just editing. There's no command line length limitation here at all. We've got other kinds of little features like for example, let's suppose you don't know where uh, you put something, um, we can take a look at uh, all of the places where grep um, begins a file, and you can see that it, it fills in, this is a zero or more directory level wildcard, uh, it got grep.c in the current directory, but it also got it uh, in subdirectories, and in fact it can walk down as many as you like. That's just a quickie little demo of just a few of the things you can do with this. For more information, go ahead and go to my website, hamiltonlabs.com. You can download a demo version of it, and uh, I hope you like it. I, if you have questions, send me mail. Um, I, I think you'll have fun with it. Thanks. Bye-bye.